good morning students in the previous video we got to know about the political divisions and location extent of the continent asia in this video we will be learning about some physical features of the continent of asia let us start with the quick facts which are given here it says that the concentration of salt in the dead sea is so high that you will not drown in it you will remain afloat now this is because of the natural buoyancy now um, as we all know that uh, dead sea is a land locked sea and because of this nature uh, the water tends to evaporate and leave behind massive amounts of salt making it so dense that people can float on top of it and we have another example for it is the great salt lake which is again a very salty lake which means it is a very dense lake and uh, the survival of uh, the marine life is also not possible in this dead sea and great salt lake because of, because uh, the water is very highly saline so uh, the plants and animals cannot survive and uh, because of the high density the human beings do not drown in it they float on top of it coming to the physical features asia is broadly divided into five physical regions firstly the northern lowlands then central fold mountains and intermountain plateaus thirdly the southern plateaus fourthly the great river valleys and the last are the island chains in this video children we will know about the northern lowlands and the central fold mountains and intermountain plateaus now coming to the first physical feature northern lowlands these are lowlands these are large plains the first point which is to be focused here is the extent of the northern lowlands they are the low lying land as we as the name suggests lowlands they extend from the ural mountains in the west up to the bering strait in the north this is first point on the extent then we can come down here we can also mention that lying between arctic ocean in the north and central mountains in the south now we have all the four directions between which uh, the northern plains northern lowlands lie we have ural mountains in the west bering strait in the northeast we have arctic ocean in the north and central mountains in the south these are roughly triangular in shape and are widest in the west direction of the continent they form the world's greatest continuous plains three rivers this is the second point children which you need to focus upon for the northern lowlands first is extent second is the rivers there are three rivers which flow northwards into the arctic ocean so that means arctic ocean is the mouth of these three rivers that is these three rivers drain in the arctic ocean the name of the rivers are ob yense and lena so these three rivers are very very important for the northern lowlands because these are the only water bodies which flow there and as we all know uh, the rivers when they flow in the plains they make the land fertile they make it very very suitable for different types of agriculture and different types of vegetation also these plains are known as the great siberian plains these are marshy and swampy lowlands now why they are marshy and swampy why marshy and swampy means water logged where where it, uh, there is lot of water and this is because of the presence of three rivers which we read here ob yense and lena so it is a water logged area the lower course of on the mouths of the rivers freeze in winter children as we read here that the three rivers ob yense and lena drain in arctic ocean that means they uh, the lower course or the mouth of the river is arctic ocean and as we know arctic ocean is a frozen water body in the frigid zone so we can say that uh, uh, these rivers freeze in the winter because in the winter the temperatures are very low so the water which flows 
towards the northern direction towards the arctic ocean freezes in the winter so water coming from upper courses which are situated in warmer latitudes spreads out over large parts of the plains as we all know the rivers are draining in the lower uh, in the uh, colder latitudes that means in the higher latitudes they are coming from the warmer latitudes that is uh, they are coming from uh, the temperate zones so uh, there the rivers spread out the water spreads out in the large plains large fields so that is why these fields are marshy and swampy Another lowland region of smaller extent exists south of this Siberian plain in Central Asia which is around the Aral Sea. This plain is an area of inland drainage. We know children inland drainage means where rivers do not drain in the sea. So this region is known as Tur Turan plain. This plain is also a very very fertile plain because of the presence of the rivers of Amu Darya and Ser Darya. This Turan plain is basically located somewhere in Kazakhstan. So the two rivers, Amu Darya and Syar Darya, which we had discussed in the previous video also, drain the Turan plain and this plain is also very very fertile. Next physical feature here children is the central fold mountains and the intermountain plateaus. Now there is a complex system of fold mountain ranges with some plateaus in between the ranges. Lowlands of Asia, these are in the northern lowlands of Asia. Now we will have a close look of the system which shows that several mountain ranges meeting in a small zone that has been named as Pamir Knot. So uh, there is uh, a place where uh, something like Pamir Knot is there and um, the mountain ranges are uh, going to different directions they are being di being diverged to different directions from this knot uh, from the uh, higher levels it seems like this is a knot from where different mountain ranges are uh, appearing they radiate from the Pame knot several mountain ranges appear to radiate outwards in different directions so children here we have all the mountain ranges which radiate from the Pame knot I will explain you all the ranges through some easy notes which you can easily follow so from the Pamir knot in the east we have the Kunlun range the Kunlun range radiates in the east direction then in the north direction we have Tian Shan range now in the southeast direction we have Himalayas which turn southwards further as Arkan Yoma range. Now these are some important ranges children. In the east we have Kunlun range. In the north we have Tian Shan range. The southeast Himalayas we, ha we have Himalayas and they turn south as Arkan Yoma range. Now between the Kunlun and Himalayan range we have uh, in the southeast direction Karakoram range so Karakoram range is located between the Kunlun and Himalayas which is in the southeast direction now we also have plateau of Tibet which is the world's highest intermountain plateau uh, the height of the plateau is 4880 meters uh, it is already mentioned in the book children so plateau of Tibet is also located between the Kunlun and Himalayan ranges now what is an intermountain plateau children intermountain plateau is a plateau which is surrounded by mountains on all the sides so plateau of Tibet is located between the Kunlun and Himalayan ranges and it is an intermountain plateau then coming towards the northeast direction we have Altai, Yablonovai and Stanovai beyond the Tian Shan up to they extend up to the northeast corner of Asia. Now going to the north to south direction we have Khingan mountains which start from the north and they reach till the south. Now in the west side we have Hindu Kush range which further continues in the west as Elbers Mountain. Elbers Mountain, this is um, located in Azerbaijan, the country Azerbaijan. So, uh, in the west, uh, Hindu Kush range starts and it goes further west as Elbers Mountains. Now, in the southwest direction, we have the Suleiman range, which continues as the Kirthar range and Zagros Mountains. Then, Zagros are located in Iran. 
so now in the so south west direction we have the suleiman range which continues further as kirthar and the zagros mountains now between the kirthar and the zagros mountain we again have an intermountain plateau which is the plateau of iran now again intermountain plateau because it is surrounded by mountains on all the sides it is between the kirthar and the zagros mountain we have plateau of iran now these ranges they converge at a smaller knot now they converge at a smaller knot which is known as armenian knot we had a bigger knot pamir knot from where uh, lot many mountain ranges radiate but we have here a smaller knot uh, called armenian knot uh, through which uh, kirthar and zagros mountains converge now uh, from the armenian knot we have in the north the pontine mountains which radiate from the armenian knot in the north pontine mountains and in the south we have the taurus mountain range which radiates in the south from the armenian knot then again between the pontine and the taurus mountains we have plateau of anatolia it is again an intermountain plateau uh, which is uh, located between the mountain ranges of pontine and taurus the plateau of anatolia so children we will Uh, just come to know about uh, that we have learned about the names of the mountain ranges which radiate from the pamir knot and from the armenian knot so we have learned about the three plateaus which exist between three intermountain plateaus which exist between the mountain ranges firstly the plateau of tibet secondly we have uh, the plateau of iran and then we have the plateau of anatolia so we have learned about three plateaus and we have learned about two knots the pamir knot which is a bigger knot through which a lot many mountain ranges radiate and then we also have a smaller knot which is the armenian knot through which uh, some important uh, mountain ranges are pontine and taurus and we have the plateau of anatolia in the closer to the armenian knot so this was uh, the central fold mountain children for better understanding you can refer the map on page number 99 here see you can see the pamir knot and you can see the mountain ranges which are deviating in different directions and again we here we have the armenian knot through which you can again see the mountain ranges radiating so you can refer the map on page 99 children i hope uh, you have understood till here thank you